Kentucky has voted. CNN calls the race in Kentucky for George Bush. 28% reporting. You see the numbers 58 to 42%. Kentucky has nine electoral votes. This is a border state, important indicator for the Bush progress in the South tonight. This was a state that Dukakis had a chance of winning, so said the polls. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more of Election 88 in two minutes. CNN now calls the state of Indiana for the Bush quail team. You see the early numbers with 6% of the precincts reporting. Bush, 59%. Dukakis, 41%. 12 electoral votes in Indiana. That, with our call on Kentucky, brings in 21 for the Bush quail team. Electoral vote. That's what we're watching closely tonight. So far in the two states called by CNN, Indiana and Kentucky, with a combined total of 21 electoral votes, Bush is ahead by 21. 270 are needed to win. More late numbers coming in to CNN headquarters here. The state of Georgia, CNN is now calling the state of Georgia for George Bush. This is with 1% of precincts reporting. No surprise, the state of Georgia, as part of the South, going in support of the Republican vice president. In the state of South Carolina, uh, Dukakis ahead of Bush, 56% to 44%, again with 1% of precincts reporting. And in the state of Virginia, 1% reporting, Bush way ahead of Dukakis, 61% to 39%. Now, Michael Dukakis chose Lloyd Benson as his running mate in large part because he hoped to win Texas. Texas with 29 electoral votes at state. Early returns, less than 1% of the precincts reporting. Bush ahead, 63 to 37%. Virginia, CNN calls Virginia for George Bush. The early returns in, 3% reporting. It's Bush 55 to Dukakis's 45%. We'll take a break. CNN's election night coverage continues in two minutes. And more vote totals coming in on election 88 night. CNN has called a fifth state now in favor of George Bush, South Carolina, with 4% of precincts reporting. Bush 55% to Dukakis 44%. CNN calls South Carolina for George Bush. Let's check on the early return. CNN calls Florida for George Bush. The electoral vote count, of course, the most important. Florida, first of all, with less than 1% of the precincts reporting. Bush, 71% to Dukakis, 29%. CNN calls Florida for Bush. Electoral vote count now is up to 62. We are calling six states for George Bush. Indiana, Kentucky, Georgia, Virginia, South Carolina, and Alabama. 83 if you count the Florida electoral votes. Now to the state of Alabama with 3% of precincts reporting. George Bush leading Michael Dukakis. We have uh, called the state of Alabama, of course, with its nine electoral votes. 51%, 49%. Kentucky, 70% of precincts reporting. Bush, 57%. Dukakis, 40, uh, 43%. The state of Indiana, George Bush, also a winner. 60% to 40%, with 29% of precincts reporting. Georgia, where Dukakis thought he had a chance, 4% reporting. Bush, 57%. Dukakis, 43%. With its four electoral votes, the state of Virginia, CNN has called also for George Bush, 57% to 43%, 9% of precincts reporting. South Carolina, which we've called for Bush, 5% of the precincts reporting, Bush 55 to 45% over Dukakis. And now taking a look at the national picture, with 2% of votes of precincts reporting nationwide, George Bush leading Michael Dukakis, 58% to 42%, that's with 2% of precincts reporting around the country. Some late numbers in now for you from the state of Ohio with less than 1% of precincts reporting. It looks like George Bush is way ahead, 77% to 23% for Michael Dukakis. Ohio, Ohio is one of the key states, one of the battleground states. And the state of North Carolina also has just been called for George Bush. CNN calls North Carolina for George Bush tonight with 1% of precincts reporting, 54% to 46%. Of course, it is the electoral votes that elect presidents. So far, CNN has declared nine states for George Bush, Indiana, and seven southern states, Florida, Georgia, Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina, and also up in the north, New Hampshire. The all-important electoral vote count, Bush has 96, Dukakis nothing. Bear in mind that the 96 electoral votes, oh, I'm sorry, now does include the state of New Hampshire's four votes. It takes 270 electoral votes to win. We'll keep a running tally as the candidate totals build toward the magic number. Turning now to some states. 
Kentucky, CNN declaring George Bush the winner in Kentucky with 78% of that state's precincts reporting. Indiana, the home state of Dan Quayle, who's at the bottom of the Republican ticket, has gone for George Bush 61% to 39%. In Georgia, where the polls stayed open a little bit later because of the high voter volume, CNN is declaring George Bush the winner in Georgia with 12% of the precincts reporting. Again, a record turnout in Georgia. And in the state of Virginia, also for George Bush, 59% to 41%. Color South Carolina, Bush country, although only 16% of the precincts are reporting so far, CNN declaring Bush the winner in South Carolina. You know that's the state from which Lee Atwater is from. Alabama's nine electoral votes are going for George Bush, 56% over Michael Dukakis's 44%. In Florida, where the Republicans could pick up a Senate seat, George Bush the winner. He was favored heavily in that state. One percent of the precincts in, but we're giving Florida to Bush. And in the state of North Carolina, which was considered one of the most competitive states in the South, CNN is calling the race for George Bush 58 percent to 42 percent. Up in New Hampshire, where Governor John Sununu is going out, helped George Bush very handily in that state. CNN declaring Bush the winner in New Hampshire with just 2% of the precincts reporting. Well, it appears as though Governor Dukakis has pulled off the one district in which he had a lock on all three electoral votes, and that is the District of Columbia, which CNN is declaring for Dukakis 84% to 16%. In the state of Texas, a very important state um, because the Texans had two candidates on the ballot. Uh, George Bush is an adopted son, and, and uh, Lloyd Benson is a native son. So far, with only 1% of precincts reporting, it looks as though Texas is going overwhelmingly for George Bush by 66%. Let you know that we've not declared Texas for either Republican Bush or Democrat to caucus. Now, quickly to the boards. CNN declaring... Vice President Bush has taken Tennessee with that percentage of the precincts reporting. And in Kansas, this is the way it looks. Although there's just 1% of the precincts in, we are giving Kansas to George Herbert Walker Bush. In the all-crucial electoral vote count, this is how it looks. 270 to become the next president. George Bush ahead of Michael Dukakis, 145 to 16. We take you for a very quick look at the very crucial electoral vote count so far. George Bush ahead of Michael Dukakis, 181 to 16. CNN declares the state of Texas for George Herbert Walker Bush with 6% of the precincts reporting. Put a red check by Bush, the Republican. That's the tally so far. Michael Dukakis didn't make much of an effort during the primaries in Mississippi, and he didn't target the state in the presidential race. George Bush has taken the state of Mississippi. In Connecticut, you know what I'm trying to say, 42% <laughs> of the precincts reporting. So far, it is neck and neck in Connecticut. The state of Maryland was considered a toss-up, but George Bush has taken it by 6%. Massachusetts. Michael Dukakis country, with only 2% of the precincts reporting, CNN declaring Dukakis the winner in his home state. Michigan, one of the principal battlegrounds of this battle for the mega states that Democrats have only carried it once in the past five elections. It is leaning toward George Bush by 54%. Taking you south to Mississippi, or rather Missouri so far, 13% of the precincts reporting, Dukakis is leading George Bush by that percentage. And in New Jersey, back up north, a uh, heavily Republican state, and George Bush taking it 58% to 41%. In the District of Columbia, the nation's capital, no surprise there, Dukakis the winner, 40% of the precincts having reported. Maine is the summer home of George Bush and his family, has been for generations. It was widely considered to be going for George Bush, but with 3% three, 3 of the precincts reporting, it looks as though Michael Dukakis is taking the lead in Maine, 53%. Taking you to Kansas, George Bush, only 6% of that state's precincts in, but we are giving Kansas to Bush. In the state of New York, the Empire State, less than 1% of precincts reporting, but so far, among that very small number, it looks as though that state is beginning to go for Michael Dukakis. Coming, no surprise. Coming down the eastern seaboard to Delaware, 
give Delaware to George Bush with 12% of that state's precincts reporting. In North Dakota, which has been leaning toward George Bush all through this election, CNN is calling this race for George Bush by a whopping 83%. In the land of Lincoln, Illinois, 1% of that state's precincts reporting. George Bush is leading Michael Dukakis, 53% to 47%. Cook County has yet to fully report. Arkansas was the litmus test state in the South for Michael Dukakis. It was considered that if he couldn't take it here, he couldn't win anywhere. Well, he is leading, again, with less than 1% of precincts reporting so far by 5 to 2. And we have a very big call to make for you. CNN declaring the Buckeye State, Ohio, for George Bush. You recall this was one of the seven states Dukakis had to take tonight. Bush, Ohio. So nationally, here's the way it's stacking up right now. With 9% of all the popular votes counted, George Bush has 57% to Michael Dukakis's 43%. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Republican ticket is now within 100 electoral votes of the magic 270 needed to win the White House. GOP strongholds in the South have boosted the Bush Quail ticket to an early lead over the Dukakis Benson team. Voter turnout in many areas is reported to be heavier, in some instances much heavier than expected. The so-called conventional wisdom predicted dissatisfaction or indifference could keep a record number of people away from the polls. That does not appear to be happening tonight. Turning now to our latest tally on the popular vote in the presidential race. These are popular vote numbers, and Bush is ahead of Dukakis 56% to 44%. And for a look at our latest electoral vote count, George Bush has 215 electoral votes, only 55 away from the 270 needed to win. Dukakis has 16. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, what we're doing with the states they're not as we say electronically equal but that's why some were targeted for a lot more money and attention than others during this 88 campaign for the newest numbers from uh, some of cnn's battleground states taking a look at the boards in new york one percent of the precincts reporting dukakis leading bush in new jersey bush the winner with 51 percent of the precincts reporting in Pennsylvania, it's really nip and tuck, virtually 50-50 there. 16% of that state's uh, precincts reporting. Dukakis might be a little bit ahead. A short while ago, we declared Texas for George Bush. 11% of that state's precincts in. Michigan, this is the way it looks right now with this percentage reporting. In Ohio, a short while ago, CNN declared Ohio for Vice President Bush, 12% of the Buckeye State's precincts in. The land of Lincoln, Bush leading Dukakis narrowly. We might tell you that CNN has declared Arizona. We'll get to that in a second. Connecticut, 72% of the precincts reporting. Bush the winner in Connecticut. Now let me tell you about the state of Arizona. We are calling it now for George Bush. Remember that Arizona is a state in which Dan Quayle is almost a favorite son um, because of his connection with his mother's family, the Pulliam family, which owns the most important newspaper there. Even though the numbers are small, as soon as we get them in, we like to rush them on the screen so you can see what's going on. Let's take a look at the first figures we have from Nebraska, 10% of the precincts and That's the way it looks between Dukakis and George Bush. One other state, fresh returns just in, just over 1% of the precincts reporting in New Mexico. That's the way it looks right now. Very fragmentary, and these figures, of course, will change. And uh, back up just a second, CNN is going to call Nebraska. We're calling Nebraska for George Bush. Looking at Pennsylvania now, we told you that it was really nip and tuck in Pennsylvania. 17% of the precincts in, it's Dukakis with just, oh, a little bit more than 6,000 votes, uh, less than 6,000 ahead of George Bush, 50-50. We'll watch that for you. They're seesawing back and forth in Pennsylvania. Don't go away. We're not going anyplace. We'll be here all night and into the early morning as your network of record continues covering Election 88. Big states essential to the electoral hopes of George Bush and Michael Dukakis still hang in the balance, but right now CNN can call the home of the Big Easy, the state of Louisiana, a host state of the Republican National Convention for George Bush. 
The second wave of votes in the battle for the all-important electoral votes, George Bush has 237 to Michael Dukakis's 22 so far. Zeroing in on the land of Lincoln, 13 percent of Illinois' precincts are in. It shows neck and neck here. We still wonder what they're going to do in Cook County. Uh, we heard uh, Paul Simon, Senator Simon, tell our guy out there, Jeff Flock, that he expects Dukakis to do better downstate. We'll see. Today, you have been voting. Let's take a look at the national boards to show you what the numbers look like. Across this great country, 31% of the precincts having reported. These are the figures we can present to you at 10 p.m., a few minutes past 10 Eastern Time. The all-important electoral college vote count, George Bush way ahead of Michael Dukakis, 251 to 22, the magic number down there at the bottom on the right side of your screen, 270. All those states now coded in blue on that map indicate that they've gone for George Bush. Let's take a look at where Michael Dukakis stands right now. He has won the states of West Virginia, his home state of Massachusetts, and the District of Columbia. He has taken the lead in Rhode Island, in Vermont, in Minnesota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, and two of the most important states in this election, Illinois with its 24 electoral votes, and Pennsylvania, the keystone state, which was a keystone to Dukakis' electoral strategy. Taking a look now at the national boards, the Dukakis uh, Bush fight. First, let's take a look at Rhode Island. We're going to show you some states we haven't looked at in a while. In Rhode Island, CNN declaring Michael Dukakis the winner with just 5% of the precincts reporting. South Dakota, 4% of their precincts in. This is the way the battle looks there. Dukakis slightly ahead. Utah, 1% precincts in. That's the way it looks out there. And in Iowa, where it all started, 1% of the precincts in. We'll watch that very closely for you. George Bush leading by two percentage points. With 40% of the precincts reporting in coast to coast, George Bush leads Michael Dukakis by some eight percentage points. There are a number of states in which more than 50% of the vote has been counted, states which George Bush has taken and added to his column in Alabama. 57 to 43. In Kentucky, George Bush, the winner there. In Dan Quayle's home state of Indiana, Bush has taken a substantial lead and taken it by 59%. Color South Carolina, George Bush country tonight. And in Virginia, Bush has won 60% of the vote. In Connecticut, again, George Bush. Delaware. George Bush again, no surprise there. In Maryland, 82% of their precincts are in. We put the uh, red arrow there by Bush. State of New Jersey was one Michael Dukakis really would have considered a bonus. It went to George Bush. Jumping out into Oklahoma, George Bush taking Oklahoma. And in Tennessee, Dukakis conceded the primary here and there was no contest. And Bush has won the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. Even though electoral, the state of Michigan, which handed Michael Dukakis his worst defeat in the primaries, has just put George Bush over the top in the number of electoral votes needed to take the White House. In those electoral votes, George Bush now has 285, remember 270 were needed to win. And even though all the polls are not closed, George Bush indisputably has the electoral vote edge. Well, that is it. Um, it happened just at about uh, 2.42 Eastern Standard Time tonight. George Herbert Walker Bush apparently on his way to become the 41st President of the United States at this moment. He indeed is the President-elect. I tell you that CNN is declaring Colorado for Vice President George Bush with 17% of the precincts in. We're giving Colorado to Bush. Now, let's return to Charles Beerbauer and Charles, pardon me. Now turning to the Electoral College, Bush has racked up 31 states, 300 electoral votes. Michigan came in for Bush just 20 minutes ago, putting him over the top. Dukakis has won six states and the District of Columbia for a total of 55 electoral votes. Now looking at how Bush did in some of the key battleground states, Illinois with 43% of their precincts in, Michael Dukakis slightly ahead of the vice president. And in the state of Michigan, the state that put George Bush over the top with 
the Buckeye State. The results, Bush winning there with 62% of the precincts in. Texas, the state that had two favorite sons on the ticket, and Texans went for both of them. George Bush for the White House, Lloyd Benson going back to the Senate. Now we have three states we want to look at very quickly to show you what's happening with George Bush in Vermont, CNN declaring Bush the winner, 56% of the precincts in there. In Nevada, where Democrats outnumber Republicans, that state has gone for George Bush. The land of Lincoln, it is still very, very close in Illinois. Dukakis barely on top of Bush by three percentage points. And former Mayor Richard J. Daley used to visit a place very dear to his heart in Chicago. First, we're going to take a look at the major battleground states, the ones that were most hard fought for by George Bush and Michael Dukakis. New York, 83% of the precincts in now. Dukakis still leading George Bush. And just across the Hudson River in New Jersey, Bush has taken that state. Moving to Pennsylvania, 84% of their precincts end. Dukakis still holding on over Bush. Ohio was the state that got the most visits from both George Bush and Michael Dukakis. It's Rust Belt, it's Farm Belt, and it went for George Bush by 56%. Even Abraham Lincoln would be interested in this seesaw battle in his home state. This is how it stacks up in Illinois at this hour. In the state of Michigan, this is the state that put George Bush over the top and handed Michael Dukakis a defeat in the Michigan primary. Lloyd Benson failed in his mission to take Texas tonight. Texas going to George Bush. And now California still hanging fire and is going to be for a while. The counties in California have been ordered by a local court to stop releasing election returns until 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. That is an hour and 20 minutes from now, and I think I'm reading my... Let's show you how things look in the West. Arizona, George Bush taking that state. In the state of Colorado, George Bush has taken that state by 53%. In Wyoming, this is the picture now with 51% of the state's precincts and it's Bush country. Montana, always considered safe Republican turf. Uh, Dukakis had hoped for a breakthrough here, didn't get it. Nevada, this is the story there. And in the state of Utah, a hotbed of Republicanism has gone for the GOP ticket again. Bush in Idaho, a winner. And in the state of Oregon, Dukakis has won by 53% of the vote. Up there in Washington state, this is how it looks, pretty close, three percentage points, Dukakis still leading. In the state of New Mexico, Bush has taken it. Ronald Reagan state, two percent of the precincts reporting in that very important state, George Bush ahead of Michael Dukakis by some 16 points. Likes what they're saying. And here's why. It's a look at the popular vote at this point. With 71 percent of all votes in the nation counted, George Bush has taken it 54 percent to 46 percent. That's an eight-count spread. And turning to the Electoral College, Bush has uh, rolled up 37 states for a total of 352 electoral votes. He only needed 270 to win. Michael Dukakis has won nine states in the District of Columbia. One more quick call before Bernie and I button it for the night. CNN is calling the state of Alaska for George Bush. You know, George Bush said tonight, we can now speak the most majestic words democracy has to offer. The people have spoken. Indeed, they did tonight. They certainly did. I was struck with uh, the words used by Governor Dukakis. He was very gracious, and he reminded his supporters in that ballroom up in Boston, as well as people watching nationwide around the world, that George Herbert Walker Bush is the 41st president. He is our president. And he went on to stress that uh, all of us, all Americans, must work together to solve some of the very desperate problems facing this country, problems that need to be solved. One thing I grab onto as a sign of optimism, both George Bush and Michael Dukakis thanked the young people, the people who'd worked in his campaign. You think of this campaign as debates and, and television advertising, but politics in this country really still is young people and older people who stuff the envelopes, who make the phone calls and knock on the doors and get the vote out. 
that still is the most important thing about this democracy. But our process is too long. <laughs> it is just too long. You remember that Pete DuPont declared in 1985, and the men we saw and heard tonight have been running for more than two years. It is too long. You cannot expect any people, Americans or otherwise, to stay glued to every word, to follow every action committed by these men in the name of their quest for the presidency. Something has to be done about our system. It's too long. Our men and women of CNN started this campaign in January of 1987, almost two years ago, setting up bureaus in New Hampshire and in Iowa to cover the beginning of this process. They've done a grand job. They are the winners of, uh, of this election coverage for us, and Bernie and I have been honored to serve with them. And my favorite throughout this entire Campaign 88 process was CNN's uh, debuting Inside Politics 88, a half hour, Monday through Friday, half hour, nothing but politics. And then, of course, this last week in the run-up to tonight, a full hour. And we will close out Inside Politics this Friday. To me, that has been a gem, and I like to think it's been a major contribution to you, our viewers. Well, this is what it looked like tonight. Some of it you saw and heard live on your network of record. Let's take a quick look back. And thanks for the memories.